All right, folks. Welcome back to NYCCNC. I want to show you my first project on the lathe. I've spent the past few weeks um, learning and researching the lathe, and uh, there are quite a few helpful websites out there, including CNC Zone, Practical Machinist, the 7x12 Mini Lathe Yahoo Group, as well as MiniLathe.com, and Jose Rodriguez's website. All incredibly helpful and useful. Um, there's no particular point of the widget here I just made, but um, wanted to show you um, sort of the processes I went through to make it, and I'm actually really excited. I uh, turned my first ever threads on the lathe, as well as actually really most of the other things I did were, were the first ever. It was really the first time I even fired up my lathe. But uh, with having done the research and just being methodical and having the right tools, I um, found it to be incredibly rewarding, and I'm really actually proud of, of how this looks and how it came out with. Um, just to give you a quick overview, this is three-quarter inch round stock aluminum 6061. I um, have threaded the uh, inside interior threads here with, um, with a thread uh, tap, but then the threads on the OD here I did cut on the lathe. Um, and if you see as I screw this together, they are very, very good threads. I'm not sure I would say they're Class A, but if not, they're really close. And, uh, and it threads down here nice and snug. I just put a little accent piece on here in the chamfers and good finish quality. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really happy. So let me go ahead and show you some of the tools I used to, uh, to make this. All right, the first thing I did was chucked up the round stock in the lathe, and I used my parting tool to part off the piece I was going to work with. The, um, this is held in my A to Z CNC quick change tool post. It comes with a uh, cutoff holder, and I did that in the low gear at about 200 RPMs, plenty of coolant, and uh, you know feeding steady on the compound, excuse me, on the cross slide, and it actually worked really well. I know some folks I think have some trouble with the part off tool, but uh, I found that it worked quite well. So then I had my blank piece of stock, and the first thing that I did was actually to center drill this piece using the center drill held in the Jacobs chuck. This is the MT2 taper that fits in the tailstock. If you see one of my previous posts, I discussed uh, aligning the tailstock so that it's properly uh, centered. Once I had center drilled it, I then drilled it with a 2764, which is the proper drill bit for a 1 half by 13 TPI uh, tap. This is a tap I bought it with a set from Grizzly, and I, I think I'm going to try to upgrade as the, uh, they're just not sharp, they're just not super high quality, but nevertheless it did the trick, so it left me with uh, the interior threads there. I then just faced off this for aesthetic purposes, and then I put a couple of different uh, chamfers on the outside of this part here with the right hand cutting tool. And then after that, I took this part out and I chucked up this piece, which was, uh, you know, solid three-quarter inch stock. And then the first thing I had to do was use my uh, dial indicator on the magnetic base, which I have been mounting. I'll show you here real quick. I find that it's easiest to mount this right at that spot on the compound and then what you're able to do is move the uh, the carriage over both laterally and back and forth to align the um, dial indicator tip over the top center of the part. So I use that on my four jaw adjustable chuck to center the stock in the chuck and after I had that centered I turned down this part here to half of an inch, so that was the first time I had ever used a set of calipers and really paying attention to your uh, tick marks on your on my cross feed to make sure that I measured precisely and I got it down in with about half a thou of the right diameter. I then put my parting tool back in and I cut a few notches of thread relief. I was cutting 13 inches per minute, which is pretty fast, certainly for, for a beginner. So I wanted to make sure I had plenty of thread relief. Then once I had that turned down to half an inch and I had my thread relief in, I changed 
the gears on the back of my 7x14 lathe and the uh, diagram in the catalog for 13 threads per minute showed that I needed a, a I think it was a 40, a 65, then a 60, and then a 30. So um, had to change all four gears. I'll actually just show you that real quick in the uh, back of the lathe, but I'm finding that this isn't as quite as cumbersome as I uh, as I thought it might be. It only took me a few minutes to get everything lined up. And then on the cutting 13 threads per minute, th excuse me, cutting 13 threads per inch because it's a an odd count. You have to use um, always start on the number one on the thread dial. But once again, just had to pay attention. It wasn't too hard. And then I started uh, threading. I had my compound set at 29 degrees and uh, you know moving in only a couple thousandths an inch at a time. Plenty of coolant. I was using this. Uh, rely on tapping and or cutting and tapping fluid. It worked just fine, um, and just took it slow uh, because I, you know, wanted to get a good quality thread and just didn't want to mess anything up because I was trying to rush it. Sure enough, finished uh, finished that. The only way I knew I was finished it was I was just, as I think I got close, I was just giving the part a feel, slide on to see how it fit, and as soon as it threaded on, I knew I had it. I used a file just as the piece was turning to uh, take off the, the top um, rough edges of the threads. And then I uh, just doctored it up a little bit. I cleaned up this face right here and then I just made an accent part with my parting tool here, put a nice chamfer on here and then cleaned up the end here once again going back to my right hand cutting tool. Oh, I should mention that this is the 60 degree thread cutting tool that I used and I used that with the uh, stare at 60 degree piece to make sure that my uh, my tool was set at 90 degrees to the part to make sure that my threads were would be cut properly and uh, then I, once I was done I just used a few pieces of scotch bright to just clean up the outside of the part as it was turning to make it look uh, nice and clean and so there you go once again I'm, I'm really happy I'm looking forward to now to taking on projects that uh, sort of have more of a point. This was just sort of for fun and to see if, uh, if I could successfully cut threads and a few other things and I'm really happy with it. So really excited. Also one last thing, please check out my CNC machining blog www.nyccnc.com. I'll have links on this uh, on this thread with uh, or links to some of the great websites that I, I've definitely used a lot over the past few months to learn about more about lathes and turning and I am very grateful for all the knowledge and effort that people have put into publishing so much information and hope that this helps also in the future um, rather than just show you the part after I've, I've finished it and the tools I used I'll, I'll be posting a uh, video of, of me actually making it in, in hopes that that helps other people learn what I'm doing and, and hopefully uh, I'll learn a few things along the way as well. So look forward to uh, the next one. Thanks, everyone.